to check one, one, two, one, check one, two, one, two, three, four, five in the afternoon. Inside, 
appetite shot. Briefcase back behind him. Welcome home, Clark. The stairs whisper menacing. Not again. He thinks of the make, the model, the tread, the riser, vertical dimples of memory industry. Climb on over, Clark. Act now and we'll throw in the stairs. That's what is happening. Now. Certain things are prescribed. He's moving across the stars. Our concrete storm, klaxoning with ghosts, twisting with reason, twilling of time. He feels the winding, twisted light. Rembrandt's hair, thick and pretty. Get a leg up. There's something like a map, there's something like a vehicle. There's something like an instrument that stirs. There's something like a bookcase, infinitely tipping over at 45 degrees. How much? Double it, 90 degrees in his direction, prodding him, and he's looking forward. That's, That's not, not true. true. You have to imagine the stage. What an idea. A process of curved lines organizing straight lines, like one of those self-help books. Promising self-actualization in the steps. easy steps. What to do on the way to your birth or death. So roll up above. Because you can't live up in the cloud without the building building towers building. to get there. What Two steps life. forward, one step back. Two steps forward, one step back. Two forward, one. One back. Well, you can't argue with that because life is all about compromises. This is so clear. clear. All right, so go through them, get out, get the moving, Clark. stand up, stand, stand, out. stand around with strangers. What a nightmare. The trapped prisoner of Loretto Chapel. He continues twisting, or are the stairs twisting him? Uh oh. Stepping and asking, why do parallel lines never meet? Because they were never introduced. Put that in your pipe, smoke it, asshole. Good place. One more cross on the calendar and two much information and three million people are not enough for this city and four more steps to go ascending, ascribing and five in the afternoon pause Wrong floor. It's a dance coincidence. It's a dance coincidence. It's a dance coincidence. Dance point dance. It's a dance coincidence. such thing as coincidence, sign, nine, send the dance, and I'm 
for him standing perfectly still. Anything you say or do can and will be used against you. you. So, he stands perfectly still. And listen, dot, dot, dot. He believes he is a secret agent, memorial in the house of Etidorfa. A uh, fly on the wall, spying on his neighbor. He's more suspense. Okay, how about this? He knows for a fact that his neighbor, 44 Buck, is a murderer. That he was arrested way back when, was it? For tying a cat to a pole. And then tying a lawnmower to that pole. Watch it as it spirals inward. Spiraling inward. Spiraling inward. While him and his friends watch till that lawnmower spirals. Anyway, I mean, just like your family, you can't choose your neighbors. So anyhow, he met fourth floor Buck only once after his accident. That was safe, I'm sorry. Buck, the ex-banker, Buck settled out of court. After the botched robbery, Buck with the bullet in his leg. It's not the bullet that kills you. Never saw Buck again. Only hears echo. Hovering from above. Buzzing drones, buzzing. Bullying behavior started. Protecting his turf, he hears murmurs. Buck De Niro is filming. Well, to be less clear, his cats are filming. Buck the ex-banker, Buck the murderer. Virtual splash on the net, he has a web series. He calls it Mr. Snuggles and the Mystics. How oh, cute. cute. Virtual splash, as I said. An ocean of money. Shaking it. Is he finding new ways of mapping his house? Stop it. Or does he just like to exploit animals? A murderer. With accounts stamped for sociopaths. Cause as long as we are under the sun, everything in this world casts a shadow. Shaking hands with ghosts. You like, like it. it? You click on that? It's it as twisted as the stairs. That's a tremendous story. You get the idea. He thinks, no, he believes Buck has eased himself into oblivion. Or enlightenment. That would be a strange type of enlightenment. Anything, Anything to, to make, make it, Buck. Buck. Anything to make Buck. <laughs> Dragging behind him his briefcase. 
sub is equivalent to the credit check on the dot. Then we are checking her credit. The camera tightens. Good thing she, she likes her job. job. She cocks her head up, ear to the ceiling, and hears his thoughts dragging like a leather briefcase across concrete. She's from the big town, where if you want to talk, you just open your mouth, mouth and words. words come out. Sorry, Turn stick. sticks. Together, a place where people don't drag their work home with them. Credit check. He's lying on the couch, hearing... that they come into her room every night and twist her tongue. Words evaporate, feeding the staircase. Meanwhile, dot, 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 the fifth floor tenant starts building this building. The future of his memory mission. Meanwhile, Clark on the couch thinks hot diggity as he finally remembers his mission. Hot diggity. That is what he was sent to this room for. We move laterally through the moments that stir times. What it pays for. Moving, moving can be stressful. We know. And the world is a hard rock to live on. But at least it includes a free trip around the sun. The camera now again moves laterally across to meet the maker, the woman on the fifth floor. 
whispering, whispering to them. Never less alone than when alone. Waves of time crashing against the walls. She gently turns that last screw into place. Kapow! Smashes right through his kitchen wall. The damage is done. The music of construction has begun. She's building a home. Another? For reasons we are yet to understand, she sings while she works. A purely cosmic thing. Call it lork. Sorry, while she lorks. <laughs> swept away by the fat-bellied talking fists that punch the free air, eating the tarps, we wrap our heads in at night. It's five in the afternoon. It happens all the time. And if she can make it there, she can make it anywhere. And as she puts Clark's life back together, she is singing her favorite pop song. The one that she sings with the birds above. and goes to the window. He pauses for a moment, catching a glimpse of what surrounds him outside. He takes a sip of water. He notices that the woman on the fifth floor has been busy. She has built a new birdhouse. And he is quite surprised by the amount of detail that she has put into the work. On the outside, it looks like an exact replica of the very building that he lives in. The siding is the same. There's even this beautiful wood. It looks like mahogany or walnut trim around the door. <coughs> the doorknob is a brass Victorian style knob. And he feels like he can reach out and turn it. He's even amazed at the impossibly tiny deadbolt lock that she has included in this birdhouse. And then he really feels like he can reach out and turn it. As if then he would walk inside. The parquet flooring would be made of something like ash. There would be dirt, twigs all over the floor. Walnut molding around the perimeter of the room. Leading his eye to a staircase. And he notices on the staircase 
there are cables. Many, many cables winding together leading up the staircase. And he starts to follow them. And he's climbing the stairs. And he gets to the second floor where there are three rooms, and from those rooms there are more cables, winding themselves into the original cables, creating a bigger, thicker spindle of cables. And he follows those cables to another staircase. And more and more cables are blocking the stairs, so he has to sort of climb over them in an awkward way. And on the third floor, there are three more doors with more and more cables coming out of them. And he's now climbing over this massive web of cables. And he notices they all lead around the corner. So getting his footing, he climbs himself around the corner. And when he turns the corner, In front of him is a giant tablet with the weather forecast on it. And he's amazed at how small he is in front of this giant tablet and at how beautiful the weather forecast for five in the afternoon actually looks from that particular vantage point. And he tries to move the clouds, move the, the map, the precipitation measurements, and he can't, he can't move anything. But when he touches the screen, his blood runs totally cold. Gets this, like, shock. And he turns around, and he sees a man dragging a briefcase behind him, finding his footing over this giant mess of cables, and he hears the man turning the corner, going down the stairs, his briefcase thudding behind him on the stairwell. Finally, he hears the man shut the door behind him. And he goes to the window and pauses for a moment. And then he notices the house across the street. It looks identical to the house that he lives in. The detail is amazing. There's even this beautiful walnut trim around the door. And the doorknob is like a Victorian era style doorknob made of brass, even with an impossibly small deadbolt lock. And right as he's about to reach out and turn it, he sees the woman in the third floor window staring at him. She's staring and staring and staring, and it looks like from where she is, her head's been cut off. And she just keeps staring at him, and he can't remember how much time went by. Until finally, she turned off the light. Thank you.